I'm Susan Corbett. I'm the uh, chair of the South Carolina chapter of the Sierra Club. I'm a lay person. I'm a volunteer. I've been paid to do this. This is something I've been passionate about for a long time. I've been following this issue since the 70s when they built a reactor uh, out where I was living. And um, I just, I'm, I'm a lay person, but I, I try to follow a lot of the things. So I'm going to try and share with you some of the stuff that I've learned tonight. Uh, and I represent the Sierra Club. And I'm here to kind of express to you why the Sierra Club uh, opposes nuclear nuclear power. Um, as you just heard, you know, the nuclear power was kind of born out of the um, atomic age. After we had killed all these people, uh, Eisenhower decided we needed to do something to kind of counter the horrific effects of um, the nuclear bomb. So they came up with this idea of atoms for peace, where you would take this technology and you do something good with it. And they decided you could make electricity because you can boil water because it's such a heat generating technology. Um, and so they, they kind of lured the utilities into, you know, coming along and, and joining this club, the nuclear club. And the very first commercial reactor was built in Shippingport, Pennsylvania in 1958. That's when it all started. And today we have 104 operating reactors. And you can see we have seven in South Carolina. We're the second most nuclear state in the United States, right behind Illinois. And we have, uh, and most of them are in the east. You can see there's only a few in the west. And we have two more that are under construction right now, one of them in Georgia and one of them here. This is Plant Vogel in Georgia. Um, you can see this. they're a little further along than we are. Here is um, BC Summer in uh, Jenkinsville, right here about 20 miles outside of Columbia. So those two are under construction now, it would be 100, 100, 106. Um, so here are the reasons why Sierra Club basically opposes uh, nuclear. And there's one other thing, people always say, well, why would you oppose that? You can, it doesn't emit greenhouse gases. It'd be a good, clean energy source. <coughs> well, the problem is, one problem among many that I didn't mention here is it takes too long to build a reactor. You could never build enough reactors fast enough to combat global warming. It takes a decade to build a reactor. And we've got so many old ones, you spend all your time just building them just to replace the ones that we're going to have to retire. So that's not in there. But here are the main reasons that we oppose it, okay? Starting with too expensive. And we were just at uh, the Public Service Commission last week asking them to review the idea of building this Jenkinsville plant because what's happened in the last uh, six years since B, uh, SCE and G decided to build that nuclear plant, costs of nuclear plants have continued to rise and everything else has kind of gone down, including the demand for electricity. We're in a recession. That always happens in a recession. You don't use as much electricity. People try to save money on their utility bills, they drive less. So the cost of nuclear is going up, you can see that's nuclear <coughs> yellow. The price of gas, natural gas, has fallen off dramatically. Here's another uh, trend, you can see the top line is nuclear. It's just headed off the chart there. Everything else is either going down or kind of stayed level. So costs are, are very, very a big factor in all of this. Uh, we've had five rate hikes, there's another one coming up at SCENG. Um, this is a real, real expensive technology that is, by the way, heavily subsidized by your tax dollar. It's not a free market. It would never stand alone on a free market. It's so underwritten. So that's one of our main reasons why we oppose nuclear cost. And you can also see that the cost of solar, as an example, has really going down very fast. And in Europe, it's being widely used. Germany just set a record. They, they created 22 gigawatts of solar in one day. New world record. All right, reason number two, it's very dirty. Don't let them tell you it's clean. You only have to look at one part of it, the uranium mining. Have you ever been out in Moab at the Four Corners? It's terrible out there. Uranium mines all over the Southwest haven't been cleaned up. Here's an article from Scientific America about abandoned, abandoned uranium mines. Big problem, uranium mining is very, very dirty. I'm not gonna dwell on these too long. Reason three, this is a big one, too much water. It's too dependent on water, it uses too much water. In a world where only 1% of our usable water, of fresh water, it's only 1% of the world's water, we have got to protect our water sources. Nuclear plants are very dependent. They use about 35 million gallons a day. Um, it has the highest water consumption of any of the thermoelectric uh, technologies. And when the water is returned to the lake or the river, it's often very hot, resulting in fish kills and very dangerous uh, abnormalities with the aquatic life there. They all, they clog up the intake. In fact, it's a funny story. A couple months ago, um, 
think it was at Diablo Canyon, the jellyfish got sucked in and clogged up the reactor and they had to shut it down. We're like, go jellyfish, go jellyfish. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, moon <laughs> yeah. the, the water is a big problem. And the other thing that bothers me, that worries me, is that, um, I don't know if any of y'all have watched the uh, TV show Revolution, this new thing that's on mm -hmm. NBC. Well, there's a small detail that they keep forgetting about. If there was no power, no electricity, there would be no water circulating in those power plants. Every single reactor in this country would have melted down and released enormous amounts of radiation. Without water, without power to keep these things cooled, they're dead. They're going to melt down. They're going to blow up, burn, whatever they're going to do. Very water dependent, very water consumptive. And the whole process, mining, milling, enrichment, all of that uses tremendous amounts of fresh water. Reason number three, too much waste. A single spent fuel rod, when it comes out of the reactor, is so thermally hot and radioactively hot, if it was in this room, it would kill all of us within a matter of a minute. Remember that scene in the, the first the Star, Star Trek movie where Spock's inside, there he goes and there's a fixed reactor, and he's on the, that was him, he was him dying from radiation poisoning, you know, from being exposed to high levels of radiation. So when they take those spent rods out of the reactor, they have to put them in those pools. Here we are, what, 55 years later from that first reactor that we saw at the beginning? we're now one step closer to solving the waste issue. <coughs> With the failure of Yucca Mountain, um, they don't know what to do. So what they're talking about doing is finding some place and dumping it on an interim basis. Like, let's take it over here and just sit it over here for a while until we figure out what to do with it, okay? This interim location. Well, where do you think that interim location might be? We, just we better worry about that. We will not be a replacement for Yucca Mountain. We cannot be a replacement for Yucca Mountain. This, well, there are other sites, but D, the DOV sites are the most attractive because this, they have you know, qualified work, work people, work staff there, and they're, they're secure. But the, the danger of that is if you have all of the waste in one congressional district, everybody else goes, oh, we've taken care of it now. You know, we don't have to worry about it. So we don't want consolidated storage. We want it left where it is so that every congressman has to worry about what to do with this <coughs> waste. So they have to get together and decide together what to do, not stick it in South Carolina and then leave it for us to worry about. And we want it left in the reactor sites and hardened on-site storage at the reactors as much as possible until they find this permanent repository. I'm going faster because I'm going to do this. Reason for too much radiation. Um, there is no safe level of radiation. There's this new movement out there in the industry to promote this theory of hormesis that a little radiation is good for you. No viable study has ever shown that. There is no safe level. In fact, there are numerous studies going on now that show that even low levels of radiation are dangerous. Uh, we have our own study here. Tim Mousseau, Dr. Mousseau at the university, just came back from Chernobyl. He's done studies there that show that even you know, low levels of radiation are damaging to biological life. Um, every reactor emits radiation. They either leak it or they have unplanned Accidents, releases, they all give off radiation. Accidents like Fukushima contaminate large areas. The risk is most great in children and pregnant women. And two studies that have been done in France and Germany have shown that children living around nuclear reactors have elevated leukemia rates. Two studies there. So, too much radiation. Reason five, too much risk. Chernobyl, Fukushima have left large areas uninhabitable for, for generations. Uh, Fukushima is threatening to take down the economy of Japan. The, the largest utility, TEPCO, failed, went bankrupt. The citizens had to buy it out. It's been nationalized. The whole economy has been shaken. The food chain has been contaminated. There's huge cover-ups going on there. People are outraged. The whole economy was based on nuclear. Now you have the whole country up in arms saying, no, we don't want any more nuclear. Now what are they going to do? They put all their eggs in their basket, and they're in big trouble. They don't know what, they don't know what the long-term effects are going to be. It's very risky. Here's a map of the plume. We've been dosed in this country. They didn't tell us how much, but we've been dosed. So it's still coming. It's still leaking. In fact, this is recent. This is I wanted to play this number, not enough time. This is reactor four. The spent fuel pool was damaged. The structure was damaged. It's up in the air. It's very unstable. 
They need to stabilize it. If, it, if there was another earthquake and it collapsed, it would receive, it would see, emit 10 times the amount of radiation as Chernobyl. Mm. Just that one spent fuel pool. Mm. Very dangerous situation. There's the, it's terrible. It's a bad, and it's still going on. We're not hearing about this. This is all the news, but it's happening even now. Uh, number six, too much proliferation. I like that. Nuclear power is a gateway drug to nuclear weapons. It really is. I mean, if you if you have nuclear power, you're either enriching uranium, like Iran, or you're thinking about reprocessing, which means you're going to have plutonium. So when you have nuclear power, there's a great temptation to, oh, you know, I can get that enriched uranium. Um, in, around the world, there are 250 metric tons of wep weapons usable plutonium in countries that have reprocessed. So you've got this stockpile of this really deadly substance that's, you know, radioactive for 24,000 years that can be weapons usable that is sitting around in, in Russia and France and Europe and, you know, it's, so, and are we going to go around the world being the nuclear police? Is that going to be our role now? We're going to have to go around and make sure nobody does this? We don't have the money to do that. We can't be the world's nuclear police. We need to lead by example. And the reason seven is that we don't like this is there are so many better choices. Um, you know, we could, we could reach energy independence in this state. We have 300 days of sunshine. We have massive offshore wind. We have a very poor efficiency rating. We could be massively energy efficient in this, in this state. Um, we could use natural gas with safe fracking techniques as a transition fuel only. I would not want to see it go on forever, but as a transition fuel to get from where we are to where we want to be, we could use that. So we have other things that we could use. And we're never going to get there as long as we keep putting all the money and eggs in the nuclear basket. We have got to get away, wean ourselves off of that and move to better choices that don't leave this toxic waste for future generations. And here's some examples. Um, I love this one. I mean, this is something, tidal power, amazing, you know? Why don't we have these off our coast? Um, here's a chart of, um, as you increase energy efficiency, this is all the savings you get on your bill. We have very poor energy efficiency in this, in this state. So, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Next. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I guess I'm next. So I'm